All right, the time has come. My favorite segment is here. I'm putting Reggie on the hot seat with Ooh. what does it mean? Reggie, you ready to roll? Let's do it, brother. So ESPN released a recap and question marks of the top 10 MLB free agents thus far, asking, was the big name free agent worth the deal from what we've seen through these first six, seven weeks? Number eight on the list was Carlos Correa, noting mm -hmm. his up and down play with injuries playing a huge factor early in the season thus far. Remember, he was starting to heat up, started cold started to really heat up at the finger, misses 10 yep. days, starting to get back into a rhythm again here. So what does it mean when trying to predict Correa's long-term plans with the Twins, factoring on his overall play in 2022? Like, if he has an off year, let's just say, is he more likely to stay or go on the last two remaining years of his deal? Has he been worth the money the Twins have paid him thus far, in your opinion? I think it's too early to tell. Yeah, it's pretty early. Small sample size. Yeah, but but... I do think that he has the the acumen. I think he has the mm -hmm. the cachet, if you will, to mm -hmm. give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, it's a very very long season. He has to acclimate to his new team. He has to kind of get into a rhythm. You know, spring training wasn't really a good place to do that because of the abbreviated nature of it and just how kind of you know wonky it was. Mm -hmm. And so, I think that he's going to rebound from his early season struggles and have a good season. And he's probably going to have suitors lined up to sign him to that big money extension that he's looking for. And, you know, while some would say, you know, don't rule it out that he'll come back to the Twins, I think it's interesting. It depends on how this season plays out for the Twins and, and how he ultimately impacts the game. Because... You know, if he decides that, you know, this is a place where he feels like he can win long term, you know, like the Twins somehow break the curse and they get out of that first round of the playoffs and, you know, kind of make a push and challenge. Um, maybe he's like, you know what? Or or if they they come close and they may be just like a couple players away and, and he thinks that they have something special to really do some special things in the coming years, then maybe he does just continue to sign on. I mean, you know, you look at him, he's still only 27 years old. He'll be 28 in September. And, like, in baseball years for a guy in his prime, like, you mm. got him at a really great time. And you would like to say that some of his best ball, his best baseball is still in front of him. And so I think it would it would be a luxury for the twins to be able to keep him. It's tough when you got guys surging like Royce Lewis, but I think I think if the two parties enjoy themselves this season and enjoy themselves in terms of winning meaningful baseball games, I could see them having a little bit longer of a marriage and I could see him opting in or if he just explodes the rest of the season I could see him opting out and maybe seeing if the twins want to give him a little bit more money a lot hinges on how this whole thing plays out this year but that's probably what Correa is thinking about yeah, interesting angle there you pointed out. Not a lot of fans probably thinking about when it comes to this long-term plans with Correa is if he does have a monster year, maybe mm -hmm. he does want to opt out and see if the Twins, first and foremost, I'll give you first crack at it, want yeah. to pony up some extra dough and um, you know come to the table with competitive offer compared to what he could get paid with some other teams. I think the mm -hmm. article poses more, you know, depending on what, kind of year Correa specifically has is going to influence and impact his long-term decision. But I think it's more about the twin success. If he sees yeah. that he's on a winning organization and he's having fun playing the game that he loves and is good yep. at, and he doesn't need to be the main guy with Buxton, you even got like a Royce Lewis, maybe somehow implemented into the mix, the long-term plans. You get yeah. Chris Paddock back, you get Kenta Maeda back. I don't know. I mean, it, it must be nice to it's not exciting. only win games, but yeah, yeah I mean, it get paid obviously along the way too so next one up what does it mean justin thomas never led the pga championship until one hole remain <laughs> in the three hole playoffs with will zalatoris he started the day seven shots back and seventh on the leaderboard 
and finished the day with his second career major victory and eighth PGA Tour win in as many years. What does it mean when choosing which player had the most roller coaster weekend? <laughs> Thomas and his roaring comeback. Omido Pereira, who was in the driver's seat all weekend Ooh. until his heartbreaking collapse on 18, hits it into the water, double bogeys 18, Ooh. misses out on his first major win. Ooh. Yeah, it was Ooh. wild. Yeah. Ugh. I think I think um I think it had to be Perea. Like Yeah. I think what's cool is you saw it from both sides. Mm -hmm. Winning a golf major is very hard. Mm -hmm. And you have to have so many things go your way. That's why it's so incredible with things like Tiger Woods has done in his career, because you're just like right. dude, like that's just not normal that's not normal yeah no yeah. and so like dude dude had what i would do on a golf course like the collapse like that <laughs> unlike you've ever seen before like he that was what i would do on the golf course and i feel for the dude because like there are only so many people who have won majors and like to put yourself in that conversation on the pga championship dude i was looking because I was on the elliptical this morning and uh, I was watching a little bit of Sports Center, which I don't get a chance to watch a whole lot of. And they were just kind of recapping the weekend. Justin Thomas, like you said, only his second major. Mm -hmm. He's 29 years old. Mm -hmm. He won this PGA championship five under. That's wild. Five under. Like, you know, a lot of times you see a lot of these, like, leaders in these uh, championships, like, you know, they're at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 mm -hmm. under even. Mm -hmm. You know, those are what, like, this dude was able to not only battle back, but battle back and then win going five under in the whole tournament, like five under the whole time. I know the conditions were not great all weekend, hence the low scoring. Weather played a huge factor, but that's why yeah. we went into the final round yesterday morning knowing no lead was safe. And even though he was seven back on the leaderboard, um, he just put his head down and went to work, ended yeah. up rallying all the way back. And again, a little wow. bit of luck, bad luck, obviously. For wow. Eric, that, that just ended up being a heartbreaker. It sounds like he's going to be one of the better up-and-coming PGA Tour players players though over the next few months the next few yeah. years so hopefully we see him bounce back in a big way because that's a tough that's one the to hope. swallow for sure yeah all right last one espn's latest article reevaluated deshaun watson's monster 230 million dollar contract that was fully guaranteed and posed the question if deals like his and kirk cousins who not long ago broke the norm he shocked the league when he signed that three-year 84 million dollar deal which was the mm -hmm. first fully guaranteed deal of that magnitude the league had seen since then superstars like Aaron Rodgers Stafford Josh Allen Mahomes they've all signed new long-term deals however none of them fully guaranteed what does it mean when trying to predict if fully guaranteed deals in the NFL will become part of the new norm moving forward just like baseball and basketball it's not gonna happen don't think so there's just too much inherent risk mm -hmm. there's just too much yep. like some people are calling the Browns crazy for doing what they did. Like, well, they kind of are. I mean, that's Deshaun why. didn't even have any leverage. Like, yeah, he went to the highest bidder. He was just like, "Oh, okay. Like, you guys are gonna, you gonna give me what? Like, y'all know what I'm going through. Y'all know what I'm faced <laughs> right. with. Right, right. And y'all are gonna give me how much? And wait a minute, sign. Wait a minute, put that on something. Two, yeah. two thirty guaranteed. Like, yeah. fully guaranteed. You heard it. Like, you that's heard all it my money. It. Legally, he that's, said that. That's Legally. all my money. Yeah. yeah. For real? I'm going to Cleveland. Like, <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> that's where we I'm go going. We out. We gone, baby. We going to Cleveland, okay? Mama, I'm going to Cleveland. I know it's cold up there, but look, my money going to keep me warm, baby. Mm. You know, like, I, I just, especially if this deal blows up in their faces and, you know, some things come out against Deshaun that, that, prohibits him from being on the field like they want him to be. They've given up on their young quarterback in Baker Mayfield and hitched their wagon to another one. 
in Deshaun Watson, who comes with quite a bit of baggage, who is very talented. And, you know, if he isn't going through what he's going through and and doesn't have some of these allegations against him, that deal looks really smart on paper because you're just like, oh, yeah, they're just, you know, paying a, a young quarterback who's a rising superstar in this league, like, what he's do? Because, like, he was in that conversation as as top 10, maybe even top five uh, quarterbacks in the league before, you know, he inexplicably had this this these issues and these, you know, complaints that were filed against him, and he missed a year. And, you know, even before that, he wanted to be traded. And so... I just, I don't know, like, when you look at how barbaric of a sport the NFL is, I think it's tough, especially especially on non-position or non-quarterback mm-hmm. positions, guaranteeing their full contracts, it really handicaps you because, you know, there is a salary cap, there's a hard cap, and then if you're giving a guy these fully guaranteed dollars – there's a problem if that person gets hurt and now you have to fill out your roster with someone else that you also have to pay. And there's just, there is enough money to go around, but the NFL has kind of made it to where there isn't enough money to go around to give all these guys guaranteed deals. And that's tough. After the Kirk Cousins, again, kind of broke the norm, shocked the world, which again, back at the time, three-year, 84 mil for Kirk Cousins. Everybody lost their mind. And now here we are three, four (laughs) years later, and that looks like peanuts right now. But Mm -hmm. if it was going to happen and the trend was going to start tweaking towards that kind of, uh, you know, um, style of contract, it would have happened with Rodgers or Josh Allen or Mahomes or Stafford, and it didn't. There's another young kind of wave here with Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow. Russell Wilson's Mm going to have to get re-signed here in the next year, year and a half. So it could still happen, but I'm with you. Such a barbaric physical sport to guarantee all that money. As soon as you sign a piece of paper, it's all guaranteed no matter what happens. That's such a risk. We'll see what happens in Cleveland when we look back in 10 years, but high risk, high reward, we know that. But um, quite the gamble in such a, again, physical, demanding sport. We'll see how it all shakes out. 